Good afternoon and welcome back to my messy workbench where today we've got some, um, well, we've got two little battery chargers. Now, I titled this as a teardown, but um, it's going to actually be a reverse teardown in a way. Uh, I've already torn these down, obviously, and um, I'm going to show you a bit more in depth of um, what they look like inside, how they work, hopefully, and um, with any luck, uh, I'll be able to explain the schematic that I've drawn up for them and how it seems to function. It's quite interesting. It's um, not what I was expecting. Anyway, um, these are obviously uh, in pieces already, and they're already in pieces because I um, had to clean them quite a lot uh, when I received them. Um, a friend of mine gave them to me. They were just some spare ones he had. Um, and unfortunately they'd been home to an infestation of a certain insect. I'm sure you can figure out which one. And they were quite filthy on the inside, so um, before I wanted to let them anywhere near my workbench, I decided to uh, remove all the offending um, insects and their detritus that had been left in there, and uh, quite a lot of smell as well, and um, yes, I'm sure I don't need to draw you a picture. Yeah. So, um, after doing all that, they are finally out here, and um, I've got them there, as you can see. So... They're uh, basically very simple little battery chargers. Um, obviously, you know, they fit two cells at once, uh, either AA or AAA cells. Um, they claim to do NIM, nickel metal hydride. Uh, they probably do NICAD as well, I'm sure. I don't see why not. Um, they're called Vata Easy Energy Mini Charger Type 57266. Um, I don't know... Uh, the website's an Australian one, so it could be just Australia and New Zealand. I don't know if you can buy these in America or anywhere else. Um, but, you know, the basic design, I'm sure, is uh, quite common and possibly um, available uh, worldwide. Or at least, probably, you know, outside of outside of uh, Australia and New Zealand, at least, anyway. Okay, so here's one of the charges uh, up close and more in depth, so you can have a better look at how things go together. So, uh, the case is in two parts. Um, this is the back half, I guess. Uh, it contains the pins to go in the power socket. It's got the uh, label there, which tells you some things about it. And it's got three screw holes, and the transformer is soldered into... well, soldered onto the pins at the back there um, directly, and then it just sits in a little sort of slot that's molded into the case. Um, it's just a very small transformer, three volt output, uh, not not high current or anything, um, just a basic thing. And then of course we have the uh, front of the case. Um, this has the uh, slots for the battery contacts, uh, holes for the LEDs, it's got uh, little sort of trough guide things for the cells to sit in, and it's got the brand name on top, um, and we've got the uh, more more of a slot cutout thing to hold the transformer in place and the uh, three screw uh, shaft things, whatever you call them. Um, we've got the screws um, nothing particularly exciting to note about those except that I lost the bottom one and had to replace it with this one. Uh, <laughs> it is actually important though because the mm, screw <laughs> I don't know actually if there's a technical name for these, but sort of screw shafts that these screw into. Uh, these two are longer and this one's shorter, so um, these screws are actually pointed on the end, and these go in the top two. The one that goes in the bottom is actually sh slightly shorter and is flat on the end. Um, that has to go in here. Otherwise, uh, if you screw it in, if you screw one of the longer screws into here, it'll actually break out through the plastic and, you know, won't be very good. So need to make sure you uh, don't mix the three up. Um, they do look very similar if you haven't lost the original one. Obviously for me it's very obvious because it's a completely different colour. Uh, the other thing about the screws though is they uh, these silly sort of security things with the uh, slot on top that's cut in half with a thing. So you either need to get the correct security bit for that or you can just do what I did and take a cheap screwdriver um, uh, I did this years ago to this one actually, um, and just cut a little V notch in the end of it, so that'll just fit in there and works quite well. Obviously, it won't be that great for any um, really tight screws; it'll probably just snap off. Uh, in that case, you'd want to use the proper security bit for that. But you know, in a pinch, this will work. Um, I made this years ago, basically um, for opening a toaster, and I've kept it ever since. It works quite well for toasters and for things like this. Uh, anyway. 
And of course, finally, we have the circuit board itself, which is uh, labeled GV ATVT, which I think is exactly the same as yeah, it's exactly the same as what's written on the transformer, actually. Funnily enough, so um, yeah, I'm not sure. That must be the maybe the uh, code name for it or uh, manufacturer's name. I wouldn't be surprised if these were just some sort of OEM design that was uh, branded out under various different things. Um, anyway, so the circuit board is very basic. We got some sort of springy battery contacts uh, for the cells. They're not particularly good. They're very thin and they look like they'd be prone to rusting. In fact, these ones here are starting to corrode slightly. So, yeah, not not too good there. Um, pretty pretty cheap. Uh, got a couple of LEDs which tell you what's going on. <laughs> More on that later. A um, couple of rectifier diodes and basically very very uh, basic circuit. A um, couple of transistors and a bunch of resistors there. Um, eight resistors in fact. So very very low parts count. Um, very simple design. Um, not much more to say about that really. Um, I'll switch over to a schematic view in a second and I'll have a look at the circuitry and how it all works and then basically I'm just going to reassemble this and um, test it out. Okay, so I've drawn up the schematic for one of these chargers in KiCad and it turns out they're actually worse than I originally thought. <laughs> now, they're very simple, um, just like I said, a small transformer um, converts it to 3 volts AC and then we've got two identical charge circuits for each cell of the charger. Now, if we look at the top side here, top half, let's, let's pretend that this is uh, the positive half of the wave and this is the negative half. Um, then what we're going to get, according to conventional current flow, just to confuse people, um, let's just pretend we're talking about uh, positive current flow here, not the actual electron flow. But say so this is positive here, and positive flows up here through the cell, or this one, depending on which one you've plugged in, through a current limiting resistor, which limits the current through the cell. In this case, with the AA, it's about 150 milliamps. With the AAA, it's about half that. Um, that'll go through these resistors or resistor, and back through this, uh, basically, a rectifier diode, um, and back to the other side of the transformer. And, of course, the same will work the opposite um, with the other half of the circuitry and this will actually swap over on each each time the wave goes changes polarity. Now the batteries are basically constantly connected through their current limiting resistor across the transformer and they will be constantly charged at the specified current. Um, there is no charge cutoff or anything whatsoever with this uh, charger. Um, the circuitry basically the trans transistor is basically an indicator that tells you if the battery is plugged in or not. <laughs> um, when the battery is disconnected, this voltage uh, rises up to the closer to the transformer voltage and this PMP transistor is turned off. Uh, when the cell is inserted, the voltage here drops and this transistor is turned on and it turns on the green LED as well. Um, it's a basically a a uh, slight variation on the really basic charges which just have the LED and resistor in series with the cell and they charge at about 10 milliamps and they take a really long time. This one on the other hand it has a higher charge rate and of course you can't put 150 milliamps through one LED or it'll just blow up, uh, at least not a small low power LED like this. So they have to switch that with the transistor instead. Um, I initially thought that the transistor was to uh, cut off the charge when the cell was full, but it's not. It's just completely um, only there for the control of the LED. So these charges aren't that great really. They will charge at a modest current and they will not stop once they reach full charge, nor will the light go out to tell you that the battery is charged. Um, you basically have to guess, assuming that your cell is fully discharged, um, look at the charge current, look at the cell capacity, and just guess a certain amount of time and hours that it will take to charge. So, um, say your charge 
your cell is um, 1,500 milliamps milliamp hour cell charging at 150 milliamps it's going to take about 10 hours to charge so <laughs> you know um, kind of annoying really the, the LED is not not there for charge indication the transistor is not there for charge termination there's no no intelligence with the charger really whatsoever it's um, not that great <laughs> okay so now I'm going to reassemble one of these things and um, see how it goes which will be mildly interesting hopefully so um, very basic <laughs> we've got the um, circuit board here and that just uh, solders onto these two wires from the transformer so they go through a couple of holes at the top there if I can just get that in it's a bit slightly tricky there is some old glue in the way so a um, little bit silly, but should work or not. Hmm. Oh dear. Maybe there's too much glue around the ends of these things. Let's uh, pull this crusty glue off. This actually looks like that really horrible brown glue that goes corrosive over time, so... Probably gonna get rid of that anyway. Okay, now the uh, wires should go in more easily. There we go, that looks like it's working. Now, just have to hold them in place. Uh, let's just put that like that. That should work. There we go, okay. Take some solder. Uh, hopefully you can see this. And... Just flow these on. All right. So, that's that back on there. Um, all looks pretty good to me. So now, you just got to sit that back in the case. So it just sits in there, there's a couple of little spike things that orient the board in the correct way. And then this front case just goes over the top. Um, obviously you've got to make sure that the uh, contacts and LEDs line up with the uh, holes there. So. These slot in uh, like this, these slot in like that, and these ones for the AAA cells actually are a bit kind of more springy than the other ones. You've got to sort of get a screwdriver in the side there and push them over until they go up. Do that with the other side. There we go go straight in. So uh, that's all lined up, the LEDs are all lined up, everything looks good. I can put the screws in, making sure to put the uh, long ones at the top and the short one at the bottom. And yeah, these screws are a bit lame, but I'm going to reuse them because, hey, I'll probably never, never really want to undo them again anyway. <laughs> well, Maybe I'll uh, upgrade the charger at some point with some sort of um, smart battery monitoring IC. Replace that whole circuit board. Maybe. I don't know. The only problem with that is the, uh, like I said, the spring contacts for the uh, cells are a bit 
a bit lame and might not really be worth it, but um yeah, anyway. That's it. Goes together like that. Um this one's a little dirty. I'm not really sure why, I couldn't clean that off, but oh well, doesn't really matter. Not a great charger, not a big issue. Uh, I suppose we should plug it in and see if it works. Now, it's got an extension cord here. Nothing blows up, that's a good start. Um, the lights don't come on, because there's nothing plugged in. And if we put a couple of uh, cells in here, I've got some AAA ones. We see the lights come on. And they're probably a bit flickery, because they're running at 50 hertz, Or probably 25, I guess. Hmm. Anyway. Um, 25 each, 50 in total. It's not a great charger. I wouldn't really advise anyone buy these, they're not really worth it. Uh, like I said, the um, there's no charge termination, there's no even charge full indication or anything. Um, these will overcharge and ruin your batteries if you leave them in it for too long. You have to manually time them. Um, I suppose if you... Uh, potentially if you were to... Um, put these things on a on a timer, you know, those little timing plug things you plug into the wall, you can set a mechanical or electrical sort of timing thing, you could add these, but really, um, it probably makes more sense just to buy a decent charger to begin with. Um, personally, um, I think these will be okay, I might uh, toy with the idea of upgrading the circuit board, but eh, it's probably not really worth it. Um, yeah. Anyway, there it is. A cheap, crusty battery charger that is cheap and crusty. <laughs> so there we go. A couple of cheap battery chargers that have had a reverse teardown and uh, some reverse engineering and some reverse commentary, possibly. Seems they kind of shot this whole thing backwards in a strange way. Um, well, not the whole thing backwards, but they had to kind of jump around um had to shoot some bits twice. Anyway, um, the point is, these... Uh, are not very good chargers, and I wouldn't really recommend anyone buy these. Um, I do believe they still sell these. They're called the Vata Mini Charger. Um, the new ones, I think, are black and square rather than white and egg-shaped. Um, but they're still the same thing inside, I assume. Uh, yeah, they're better than nothing, but I wouldn't advise you to buy them. There's no automatic cutoff. There's no charge indication. There's um, no charge termination. Uh, yeah, unless you're, unless you're really desperate, you've got nothing else. Um, not the best thing, to be honest. So anyway, um, hopefully that was an interesting video. Um, hopefully that was helpful in some way, useful and entertaining. And uh, yeah, not much else to say to that, I guess. So um, see you next time.